John Malden, whose newsletter, economics newsletter, is read by over a million, and it's free, and you can certainly join. It's at johnmalden.com. Uh, I want to ask, of course, I was explaining to Alan, my producer here, that uh, I always say if I were on the Titanic, I would spend more time trying to figure out why we were sinking than looking for life vests. Uh, I That's me. I have to understand things or I go nuts. So I want to now ask about life vests. I just have one more thing about the sinking. Why are the ratings agencies, if they played such a disastrous role as you're describing, why aren't they at all in, in the focus of the country? Well, they're the in, they're the uh, in the focus of a lot of legal lawsuits, um, and the the debate that will happen uh, next year will be how you uh, regulate the rating agencies because they're basically unregulated, um, and and you know, and I was writing about them a year and a half ago that you know they were a focus of the problem. Um, they everybody thought that they were the adult that was supervising the sandbox, and clearly they weren't. Um, and uh, uh, I, I think it's going to be interesting to watch the lawsuits progress because you know you buy a uh, asset backed uh, mortgage paper, a subprime backed paper, and it comes with you know this multi hundred page document, and down in you know this fine print it says, oh by the way, this is how we rated these uh, uh, bonds. And anybody looking at that should go, well, that's stupid. Why would you, you know, why would you rate a bond based on data from, you know, 2003 on certain types of bonds that had no application to the types of, of, of mortgages that were being uh, put in this bond? But but they were. I mean, they didn't have uh, a, a part of their rating, uh, the rating, uh, their data of what would happen if if uh, home values go down. I mean, it. it it uh, it actually boggles the mind in reference. Yes, it does. It really does. Uh, but uh, but I mean that's that's just what was going on. All and, right. And Let's talk about life vests. What is the what is the person who has worked hard all his or her life do now about their four hundred one k about a house that is worth less and they have been very diligent in paying their mortgage payments. They have worked hard. Uh, their pension is reduced uh, tremendously because there was in stocks. W- what does one do now? Well, today is probably not the time to call your broker up and sell. That would have been six months ago uh, or a year ago, like I was telling people. But, I mean, I don't know that we're at the bottom, but we're not far from it. I mean, when, when I, we, we were talking about American Express a while ago, so I just looked at it. Yeah. Well, it, it's, it's price to earnings ratio is now down to six. Um, I mean, it's, it's got $2.87 in earnings. It's probably going to make more money, even with the losses they're going to take on the credit cards, because now it's going to borrow at a cheaper rate. Um, the, the, there's lots of companies with price to earnings ratios of two. Uh, you know, with with half their 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 cash in them. Um, I mean, there was there was a Thai company that's it's a liquor company, so it's probably not the target market for this audience. But it, it's now uh, uh, paying an eight percent dividend yield uh, because it was part of it was a big part of the Thailand stock market, and people just sold Thailand indexes, so they sold everything, so they had to sell that stock, and it's dropped. So there's a lot of stocks that have dropped too fairly attractive values. You have to be a stock picker, and you have to be willing to stomach some volatility. But for people in their 401ks right now, probably is not the time just to go to cash. Uh, and and I, I, I feel sorry for them, because I talk to people every day saying, what do we do? Uh, you probably want to look at some more active managers, uh, not people who are just passive index investors. Index investing is a game, I think, uh, for managers with any lack of imagination or that, you know, they don't understand volatility, they don't understand uh, uh, cycles. I mean, the guy who said stocks for the long run, uh, and, and he's a very smart guy, and I'm a professor from Yale and all this stuff, but the, I mean, at Wharton, but the reality is, uh, for most people, 10 years seems like the long run. Well, we're back to where we were 10 years ago in the stock market. Um, and uh, uh, that's, I mean, Stocks sometimes, and from 66 to 82, 
stock market didn't go anywhere. It was, you know, it was absolutely flat. It went down a lot, and then it came back up some. We may be kind of like in 1974. We may be at a bottom, but it's going to be volatile going back up. But it, most people have such poor choices in their 401ks that that may be the only thing they can do. Um, if if you're liquid, if you've already gotten out, I wouldn't put money back to work today. I'd let the dust settle a little bit. Um, and but uh, sometimes. Well, I'll tell you what's depressing to me, and, and I don't get depressed easily, is that even at these horrible loss prices, people are still selling. Well, I mean, you, you're gonna, a lot of it's from hedge funds because the hedge funds are seeing redemptions uh, that they're going to have to meet January first, uh, and uh, so they're having to get liquid to be able to meet the redemptions. Uh, they're, I mean, the credit funds that that. Were, they were buying good credit paper. They're big, that's one of the reasons that the, we were talking earlier about the, the bank loans and all the credit being down. Well, they're being forced to sell, and there's no buyers on the other side. That's why the prices have dropped so much. Uh, and they're being forced to sell because they have to uh, uh, meet redemptions. Either that or they have to say, no, guys, we're not going to allow you to redeem. And that's a whole different set of issues. Um, the... the, the uh, um, I mean, it, it, it's there's some turmoil going on there because of, of, of forced liquidation. It's become kind of a vicious cycle. Uh, well, and, I'll and tell you. The, the good news, let me give you a little bit of good okay. news that I wrote in my letter. Uh, there's a lot of money going to be uh, put back to, into the investors' hands in January from hedge funds. Typically, it'll show up the 15th or the 20th of the month. And, and it's going into... Uh, pension funds, insurance companies, big endowments, because they're, they're, they're shifting their portfolios from certain types of managers to another. That money's going to go back to work. Oh, well, that's good. That's and, good and, to hear. Well, I, you I, could I, actually see a, sh- a sharp snapback rally. Uh, all right. On that, we'll have to, on yeah. that, we'll have to win. John Molden, I'll call on you again. Thank you Dennis, for your it's time. It's always fun. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. JohnMolden.com. We continue. 